Hi everybody, my name is Noelle and welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's have some fun! So today I wanted to talk about the top five most ridiculous things that have ever happened to me on stage. For those of you who don't know me, I am an actor, I've been on stage for quite a while now, and I've experienced some pretty wild stuff on stage. And because I'm filming this during the time of the coronavirus pandemic, and most of us, if not all of us actors, are no longer on stage at the moment, I thought it would be fun to reminisce and think about some of the craziest things that have happened to me while on stage. So, here we go. Number five. I was in a play called Medea and Medea for Medea. Not Tyler Perry's Medea, the, the Greek, the Greek Medea. Um, I am definitely not playing Tyler Perry's Medea, as I'll explain this to come. So, it's this very little known play, and it was done once or twice in New York and at my school. And the play takes the Greek story of Medea, the Greek myth, and adds in Thelma and Louise, and somehow it's mashed together. The, the director and the, the writer calls it a mashup. He likes to write mashups of like Greek things and contemporary things. So I was playing Medea number two, also known as Thelma, and it was a really weird experience because I watched Thelma and Louise for the first time during the rehearsal process for this, and I've never watched a movie and had all the lines memorized before, so that was weird. So it was basically, I was playing Thelma from Thelma and Louise, but everything was changed so that it was Greek, so it was like, um, the fastest route to Athens from Megara, instead of Texas, we're going to Athens. Um, and there was a part where the chorus would give lines out to the audience, and they would read along with the chorus. So the other Medea, Medea number one, is at a microphone, and she is responding to the chorus and the audience. So they're saying, they are crying, and she's like, let them cry, and all that stuff. And I'm supposed to be drawing a map. I'm, I'm kind of supposed to be in my own world in this scene. And... The ridiculous thing that happened here is the opening night. I didn't think anybody was going to do this, but boy was I wrong. The audience is reading their lines along with the chorus, and the lines keep saying they are crying. And there's one man in the audience who's going, they are crying! Poor Medea One, who's at this microphone and has to like keep herself composed while this man is like, they are crying from the audience. And after the fact, we found out that one of the chorus members, it was her voice teacher who came, and he, he was apparently really into it. And he, was, it wasn't try, he wasn't trying to be funny or make fun of it or anything. He just thought he was giving the lines with some gusto, you know? Because he just kept, they are crying with old Medea, yield Medea. It was wild. So we're doing the play Spirit, and I'm playing Madame Arcati, who is a psychic medium who kind of is a little quirky. I get cast in quirky roles a lot of the time. Maybe it's because my eyebrows can go like this. I don't know. It's because it's I'm a goofball. So she's a psychic medium, and there is a scene where she's trying to contact a dead, and she goes into a trance and passes out onto the floor, right? So the men in the scene carried me onto the couch, and I'm like, you know, I mean, not quite like that, but, you know, I'm, I'm passed out. And they're supposed to try and revive me with some whiskey, which is iced tea. Um, and our leading man had never acted before, but he was very charming in this role. He was charming in real life, too. Or at least I thought so. Anyway, um, our leading man is supposed to try and revive me with some whiskey. And he's just supposed to kind of, like, sip it. And during our dress rehearsal... <laughs> which was an invited dress. We had an audience. It was all the music teachers, so like my band teacher, my orchestra teacher, the chorus teacher, who always kind of got my name wrong. They were all there. And he spills the iced tea all over me. I'm lying down, keep in mind, and the iced tea, I just feel it like wash over me. And I was like, oh no. And I'm like, I'm wearing a silk top. This isn't good. I was like, oh, I have a microphone on. That can't be good. And so um, I was covered in iced tea, and it was quite sticky. So I, you know, revive on the one on my cue to revive, and I improvise the line, "Sorry, no coward," uh, to make it work. 
So, I, it was something to the effect of, the, oh, it's supposed, is that the funny taste in my mouth? And I was like, and all over me, oh, Mr. Condamine, what have you done? Uh, in my junior year of high school, we did a play called The Games Afoot by Ken Lodwood. It is on this YouTube channel if you're interested in watching it. I promise I've become a better actor since high school. I majored in it. I majored in theater, and I've done so many more shows and films since then. Just a disclaimer. <laughs> but it's a fun watch. You should watch it for a laugh. Um, so we're doing The Games Afoot. It's a murder mystery comedy farce sort of thing. The very first scene is a play within a play where the leading man gets shot. And so in that scene, we're all dressed in these like extravagant 1800s kind of dresses. I had this gorgeous teal dress on that was so big and froofy. And I had a really quick change after that scene. So we had orchestrated it so that I would wear my actual costume underneath that costume. It was so big that I could. And the thing is the teal dress was too long for me as most things are, I'm only five foot two. I'm actually taller than I thought I was. I thought I was only five foot one, so that's really exciting for me. But, um, so they had to hem it, and they decided to hem it, like, really quickly by hand while I already had it on, because it wasn't really a big priority for them, because I only wore it for, like, a minute on stage. And so they had me put on both costumes, and the costume major said, okay, and they hemmed it really fast by hand, and set me up on stage. So we do the play within the play, first scene, oh, somebody get a doctor, he's, he's shot, blah, 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 all the, all the drama, the delicious murder drama. And I exit, I go to take the dress off, somebody's helping me, and it won't come off. And I'm like, what is happening? Why can't I get this dress off? Oh my god, I'm stuck. What is going on? And we're in the dark, so we can't see what we're doing. And I'm like, this has never happened in tech. What is happening? And I'm trying so hard to get this dress on me, and it just won't come. So we end up, like, scurrying out of the theater into the hallway where there's some light so we can see what's going on. And we realize that I've been sewn into the costume. So the small dress, uh, in the process of hemming the big one, they, they sewed them together. So I could not escape, and I was like, I have to be on stage and like, Five seconds. They ended up cutting me out of it, um, <laughs> so that was pretty funny. T utterly terrifying because I've never missed an entrance in my life, and I don't plan on it. Um, so knock on anything. So I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna be late for this entrance. What is Kyle gonna do? I have the first line. Blah 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 blah. I was supposed to be like, oh, we're the couple. We are here. Hello, welcome. It's Christmas, and I was like, oh my god, I'm stuck in this this dress. Um, so they ended up cutting me out of it. And so then the next day, they were like, okay, let's redo this. Let's, let's fix it so you don't trip on it. They did the same thing again. They sewed me into the dress a second time. Number two, the second most ridiculous thing that has happened to me in a show was my junior year of college, not high school, and I was in a play called Anonymous, written by a playwright named Naomi Uzuka. And there was this one girl in the play who was not in the theater department, but anybody at our school is welcome to audition. And she didn't tell her parents that she was in a play. And she came from a really strict family and she was lying to them and telling them that she was in a study group. And so they found out and were not pleased and told her she could not go anymore. <laughs> and this was during the run. This was not during rehearsal. This was not during tech. This was halfway through the run. We had like three or four shows left maybe. So, we had a group chat, the cast had a group chat, and one day she sends a message and she's just like, I'm so sorry guys, and all the actors are like, what, what are you sorry about? And the stage manager's like, please keep this in the department, and we're like, we keep what in the department, what's going on? So we all kind of just like went to the green room earlier than we were called, because we were like, we gotta find out what's going on. And when we got there, they told us that she was no longer going to be in the show. Um, so that was weird. So for that night, we had a show that night. So um, we ended up pulling the light board off 
who had auditioned for the show and, and wasn't cast. And she'd been called back for that part. So we pulled her and had her read that part, script in hand that night. Um, but she had, like, the, the book was pretty small. So it wasn't too bad. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't a very large part, so it wasn't really painfully obvious that she was reading. Um, but when that was happening, a lot of mistakes happened because she was a whiteboard off. She didn't know the blocking. She didn't know, well, she didn't know what we were doing on stage so much, you know? Um, she got involved the week before during tech, not, not from the beginning. So the other actors who were part of this family were kind of like leading her around the stage. And I admire her so much. That takes so much nerve, like the guts you need to step on stage in a role you've never played before, you've not rehearsed once for, that takes guts. And to be there holding a book in front of a crowd, that takes guts. And she saved our show. We were all so thankful for her. So I just want to say, Mia, if you're watching this, which you probably aren't, but Mia, if you're watching this, I'm very grateful to you because that was, you did an amazing job. The thing that I just want to say about the other girl, she was very sweet. You know, it's not her fault that her parents, they're like, you can't go anymore. Um, but she didn't, she'd never been in a show and she didn't really kind of catch on to theater etiquette, um, which I don't know how much of that I can hold against her because she didn't, you know, she wasn't a part of that world before, but, um, you know, even simple things like don't eat in the theater, she, she would always eat whole cucumbers, <laughs> and I'd look at her and I'd be like, oh. I mean, I wouldn't do that outwardly, but I'd be like thinking, what? Who eats whole cucumbers? Like, who just pulls a cucumber out of their bag and eats it? And she one day, and she'd like take it, and she'd take it out of her bag, and she'd break it in half, and then just, just eat it. And, um, she was also, she was late a lot of the time. And, you know, like, these are simple things that, you know, just can show respect to what you're doing. You don't have to be the most seasoned actor to, to be professional. Um, you shouldn't, you know, rely on being a seasoned actor to be professional. So, <laughs> during tech, we were all in the green room, all the actors were in the green room, doing our makeup, hair, whatever, fooling around as actors do. And the girl who was originally cast had not arrived. And she was like an hour late. It was like an hour into tech and she was nowhere to be found. And the stage manager was like, hey, have you guys seen so-and-so? And, -so? and we're, all of us were like, no, we don't know where she is. And eventually she so shows up like an hour and a half late with a big bucket of fried chicken. I kid you not, um, from KFC. And it was just so alarming to me. She just walked in like, hey, what's up? Sat down next to me. And I was looking at the chicken because I was like, what are you doing? Why are you an hour and a half late with this massive bucket of fried chicken? She's like, oh, do you want some? And I was like, oh, no, thank you. So now, the moment we've all been waiting for, the number one most ridiculous thing that has ever happened to me on stage. It just happened to me this year, my senior year of college. God, I'm old. Um, I was in a wonderful play called She Kills Monsters, which is a dive into a Dungeons and Dragons fantasy world of 1995 with gay characters. And I played a demon queen, and oh, I love this part. I got to wear all leather and black and like studs, and I had a big battle axe, which is an axe with like blades on both sides. And um, it had these like carvings in it, and it was just so cool. I felt so cool in that part. My first line, violence makes me hot. And so it was such a fun part. I had so much fun in this show. Um, and it, But the thing about the show is it's not just in the Dungeons and Dragons world. It is also in the real world, kind of. They kind of blend together. But So I was Lilith, and then I was also Lily, the teenage girl who created this character who is not nearly as confident as Lilith is, and she's like a closeted lesbian. There was a lot of stage combat in this show, and I like stage combat quite a bit. When I saw that axe, I was like, mm. this, the designers on this show were mostly students. A student designed the costume, and a student designed the sets and props, and they both did me right. There's this one boss fight 
where there's a fairy character and she's supposed to be one of the bosses that the, the adventurers in the show have to, you know, take down. And so I was a demon queen, he's I was an elf, and the choreography in this fight was that we both ran to the center where the fairy is and swing our weapons which she ducks and we we swing. And then she was supposed to grab the other girl's hand and my hand and pretend to bonk them together. <laughs> now one night during an invited dress, it honestly it was practically our opening night. The the seating arrangement for the show was very limited and we had a full house. So it was practically opening night. She grabs the other girl's hand. She grabs my hand. And we actually conk. And I have it on video. Rector didn't know. He was in the audience and he was like, wow, that looked really good tonight. And did not realize that we actually conked heads. So but the thing is, we couldn't leave. We did not exit the stage for like another 30 minutes. Even if we weren't strictly in a scene, we did this in the round and we were standing along the outside um, watching what was going on. And so we had just been conked in the head. I could feel my eyes swelling shut and I could feel it swelling up and getting to be like a golf ball and I was like, oh my god, oh my god. But I'm so proud of us because we did not break character. The elf and I, we got, we got conked, but we did not break. We stayed in it and we were, we're both crazy people, she and I. So when this happened, we were both like, use it, use it. Now you know what it feels like, <laughs> you know? So whenever we did that in the future, we were A, terrified to do it, um, but B, we were like, remember how it felt. So, yeah, and the fight director had given us a sound to make when we, you know, conked heads, and so when this happened for real, I was like, Ooh! and I was like, I'll write the sound, <laughs> we exited, we were like, are you okay, are you okay, and um, we go backstage and tell like the ASM that we actually conked heads, she's like, why didn't you tell me sooner, and I was like, well, we were on stage, but we couldn't. We couldn't tell you any sooner. This is the first opportunity I've had. So, um, you know, we went through the rest of the show and I was pretty injured. I really wanted to cry because it freaking hurt. My eye was swelling shut um, and my head hurt. So I, you know, but I, I kept it in. I was like, you have to go be Lily now. You cannot cry now. You have to go on stage. And I sucked it in and I went on stage and I did the thing. And once the show was over, you know, we did our bows, all that, they were doing a photo call afterwards to take a bunch of photos of us in costume and blah, blah, blah. So as soon as everyone had left the theater, I just started crying. And my boyfriend was on crew and he came backstage to like congratulate me. And he's like, oh, you're great. And I was like, Ugh. I just instantly broke down because I'd been holding it in the entire time. He's like, why, why, what's the matter? And I was like, Kate and I conked heads for real. And he was like, oh, no, I was like, what do you mean? And then they're like, photo call. And I stopped crying and I was like, I have to go. And he was, it was, he gave me the, this look like, are you insane? And I was like, what, you can't turn off your emotions to do your job? And then I left and I did photo call and kept it in through all the photo call. And then the stage manager came and brought me ice and I was icing my head and then the director was like, what happened? And I was like, we conked. <laughs> And um, so I was finally able to cry and let it out. And our TD was really sweet and checked up on me a bunch of times and like asked me questions. He was like, I don't think you're concussed. I would have somebody check on you anyway. Um, but I had a big golf ball on my head. And she, the girl who I conked heads with, I took the brunt of the blow. It was like her head was the weapon to hit my head. <laughs> and so she had a little tiara on, this little like wire metal tiara and that cut me like right about here like above by my eyebrow and so I had a cut and then like the golf ball and it was pretty big and I got a black eye from it theater's dangerous guys I got a black eye not from cheerleading not from stunting not from any sports in school but from theater I used to be a flyer the one they'd like throw and catch and all that stuff in cheerleading and I didn't hurt myself doing that I hurt myself <laughs> <laughs> she kills monsters. So, 
be careful with stage combat. Always do a fight call. We did a fight call, but I, I, we still don't know what happened, what went wrong. But um, it's kind of funny. So <laughs> I had a black eye. And luckily, since I was a demon, my eye makeup look, I was doing a red eye makeup look, and it covered it up beautifully. You could not tell. So, yeah. And I was like, also, if she has some bruises, it's okay. She's a warrior. She is a barbarian woman. And she, it, she's a fighter. She's, she is gonna have some, some scars, some bruises. And if it's a black eye, it's a black eye. But um, I, on campus the next day, I was walking around and I was like, I look like Quasimodo because my back hurt and I hit a big <laughs> golf ball in my eye. And I went to health services and I asked for an ice pack and they're like, what happened to you? And I was like, oh, I'm a plague. We had a stage combat accident and they did not believe me at first. <laughs> they kept asking me for sure. I was like, yeah. They're like, when did this happen? I was like, last night. They were like, who was there? I'm like, I, uh, all the people were... I'm not I'm not being abused, man. I'm <laughs> I'm fine. I just need an ice pack, please. So, um Yeah, they gave me an ice pack. But that is the number one craziest thing, bonk crazy bonkers bananas, wild insane thing that has happened to me on stage is literally getting my head smashed into another human being's head and I didn't break character. So if you're watching this and you're a casting director, um, you should cast me because I will work through pain. <laughs> okay, guys, so that's about all I've got for today. I hope you were all safe and well and happy and inside your homes. And I'll see you next time. Bye!